Well, good afternoon, and, and thank you. And wow, how do you follow John Allen? But and and Jamie Mines is next, so it's a a great challenge here. But there, by the grace of God, go I. Written by Jim Bradford in the 16th century. Maybe you're familiar with this quote, but many Navy people add an additional line: "Only by the grace of God in 60 seconds go I." This presents. Because of numerous hazardous situations we face, you only have a short time to respond and a quick decision. But once you survive, you wonder, what happened? How did I get through it? Well, it was grace. And I'm an example of this grace, to be able to stand before you today from Chicago's South Side and Vocational High School. Never in my wildest dreams would I think a day like this would happen or even be possible. I'm truly thankful and humbled by this honor. It is grace. Welcome to all of you, and good to see you family, friends who I haven't seen in a while, and the great class of 76. Thank you for attending. <laughs> and of course, the brigade of midshipmen. As I look around, I just look with awe to see the greatness of, of, the, of the brigade, and thank you that you're here. It's a privilege to receive this award, and it was totally unexpected. While growing up, I dreamed of being in the NFL Hall of Fame, going to Canton, Ohio. But I tell you, I'll take Alumni Hall in Annapolis any day. When my uh, classmates called me about being nominated, I really thought it was a prank phone call. I said, yeah, right, yeah, okay. But again, I, I'm, I'm truly honored to be here. Uh, to, and of course, to share this stage and with John Allen. We've been together. He, he wore the same haircut when we were here at the Naval Academy. I knew he was a Marine. In fact, I was in the, Marine, in the Semper Fidelius Club when I was here. But then I uh, saw the light at surface warfare. <laughs> but uh, thank you, Admiral Buck, Admiral Ferguson for hosting this event, Admiral Green, your leadership for the selection committee. Uh, Ms. McDowell, all the protocol personnel that helped put this great uh, event together. I would also like to thank and recognize Byron Mershon, President and CEO of the Alumni Association, also from the south side of Chicago, who spent 13 years building the academy, the leadership of this great institution. Unfortunately, he'll be leaving soon. He's also been a great supporter of the shared interest groups, which are near and dear to my heart. The Naval Academy Minority Association, the Run to Honor, USNA Women's Network, which helped bring thousands back to the Academy. Byron, thank you for all you've done. Can we give him a round of applause, please? It all started here. I credit my success to the lessons, fundamentals, and professionalisms and friendships of the United States Naval Academy. Being part of the brigade was life-changing. I'm a product of my classmates, these guys sitting over here in the great bicentennial class led by Kevin Stone. My selection represents them. We came in together, worked hard together, served together, made some history together, and some are still making history. In fact, you can probably see one of our classmates on CNN tonight. Just a short story. When I was selected as a flag officer, we had to go to flag officer indoctrination training. Yes, we do train the flag officers to make sure they do the right thing. Uh, we had a guest speaker. He came in, congratulated us, told us what a great honor it was, but he said, if something happened to all you guys, I have 30 guys who can step up immediately and replace you. So we kind of looked around at each other. Did he really tell us that? You know, what's going on? He really took the air out of the whole room. But my point is, there are many members of the class of 76 who are more than qualified to stand on the stage. So I'm very thankful, proud, and blessed to be here and be one of the first of the class to represent us. Classmates, thank you very much for this honor. Please give the class of 76 a round of applause. I truly appreciate all my friends and family who came a long way to support me. Unfortunately, my mother, who passed a few years ago, uh, couldn't be here. She's probably looking down with pride, but saying, why doesn't Derwood have his uniform on? You know how mothers love that uniform. You couldn't go home, church, or anywhere without wearing a uniform. But I really appreciate what she did for me and to teach me a, a great work ethic. I'm very thankful my family is here. My wife, Tawanda, she won't raise her hand. But she's been my co-pilot navigator, <laughs> commander-in-chief for over 40 years, and she's my guardian angel. The best day of my life after graduation was when I married her in a courthouse in Norfolk, Virginia, four days after my second med deployment. Now, don't boo me, because we did have a large wedding a few months later. But none of my success would have happened without her. And she told me as a lieutenant during my company officer tour here that you could go far in the Navy, even though I wanted to play pro football, so, but I did listen to her, thank goodness. She was the one who joined the Alumni Association and would read Shipmate every month and then tell me to get my own. She inspired me to become a mentor, give back to others, and it was a team effort because she always sacrificed for us. From the early days of young company officer's wife when she would cook, make cookies for the plebes uh, to assisting training spouses, taking care of their families, and she even assisted in a birth of one of the spouse's babies 
Then she called the ship to the uh, officer who was deployed and had, was able to reach him on the phone. And don't ask me how she did it, but she did. She also started the USNA Plebes Parent Listserv email chain years before the discovery of Facebook with over 3,000 members. When it was time for my youngest to be born into the world, I was on a ship in Norfolk. Uh, she got in the van, dropped the kids off, drove to the hospital, had my daughter, and drove home. A true service warrior. <laughs> By the way, that daughter is in the back, and she became a service warfare officer. Uh, she did this all by taking care of the Curtis crew, and she always joked that our kids' military service was our contribution to national defense. So, Tawanda, I love you, thank you, and I'm grateful for everything you've done. Please give her a round of applause. <laughs> to the Curtis kids, and you have to stand up, please. Marcus, Nikki, Crystal, and Perry, thank you. I'm so proud of you, what you've done, your sacrifices, your many schools your many moves. You're looking at two, three, four high schools that you had to attend and living overseas. But then you decided to attend this great institution, excel, and live by the principles which it has built, and I appreciate that. Your leadership has been great throughout the military, corporate world, nonprofits, Department of Justice, and just amazing, but thank you for all your sacrifices. To my grandkids, you saw them in the slide, the possible fourth generation. In the military, they couldn't be here, but you would know if they were here. But I'm very proud of them. That's Lucas, Liam, Travis, and Sydney. Their rooms in Bancroft Hall with your name on them. Ms. Shipman, it's an honor to address you. This is incredible, this experience that you have on the stage, the life lessons that you'll get. And I know it's getting late in the day and there are two more speakers. But I'm a shining example that anything is possible. The odds of me attending the United States Naval Academy in the 70s were low to non-existent. My football coach in Chicago was a Notre Dame graduate and football player. He knew I liked the military. So, and he knew I was a leader. So he got in touch with the coaches and they started recruiting me. Rick Frazano, who passed recently, was a Navy coach. He recruited me and a few other black players in his incoming class and gave us the opportunity to impact Navy football. We did achieve success on and off the field, and I guess it was too much because he left for the Detroit Lions in the next year. <laughs> the great class of 76 graduated 34 black midshipmen, which was huge in those days and went on to do amazing things. The academy has come a long way since the 1970s. But many times it doesn't matter how you grow and where you're from, but how, what you do when you're planted, and the academy allowed us to grow. Yes, I had many challenges. Like other midshipmen, I had a company mate during plebe summer who didn't talk to me. He, we were supposed to become a tight unit, being part of this great brigade of midshipmen I had heard about, but I was the only black midshipman in the company, and he was from Lionsville, Alabama. I didn't know where that was, but that was a long way from Chicago. So we, he had a hard time. He was getting all the attention of the first class. Bad for him, good for us, because they were leaving us alone. But he always had problems with his uniforms, his rates, and his shoes. We didn't have core fans in those days. So I went one by one day to help him out, help him shine his shoes, help him square away. Well, he survived Pleat Summer. He became my roommate for the next four years, and we became best friends. He even started liking Motown. This is what USAN is all about, developing leaders, removing barriers, becoming teammates, and building lifelong relationships. During our first year, chapel was mandatory. Yes, we had to go to church, no sleeping in on Sundays. So you could either go on the yard or you could go out in town. So I joined the chapel color guard. I like marching anyway. I did colors every service. I think the old people like to see us march down, throw the flags in the back, post the colors. I must have sung Eternal Father hundreds of times. But I also learned a midshipman prayer, which I thought was pretty cool. We midshipmen have our own prayer. Wow, it still hangs over my desk today, by the way. But there was one line that always stood out that I always remember. And if you take nothing away from today from what this Curtis guy was talking about, please recall, let my uniform remind me daily of the traditions of the service of which I'm a part. To me, that's why you're here, to develop into the leaders of tomorrow while building on the professional traditions of our institution and service you have to remind yourself daily on what you stand for and remember those who came before you. Your legacy starts here, and you're building on that courage that you've been hearing a lot about today. When I was a company officer, I told my, my midshipmen to always do your best. I told them their performance as a midshipman does matter in shaping their career. It impacts your future lineal number for promotions, opportunities, career progression. The company finished first in academics, first in marching, first in professional knowledge because they took it seriously. It's interesting, the superintendent and I had a conversation about this earlier. 
But out of that company, as you may have picked up, six first company members became flag officers, including the former superintendent, Ted Carter, and also General Beiler, who's here today. Three of, us, of the six made uh, th three stars, which is great. And they let their uniform remind them daily of the traditions of the service of which they were a part. I stand on the shoulders of many USNA grads who have come before me, like Wesley Brown, the first African-American graduate, but many others who helped me grow as an officer. I'm thankful to them and the hundreds of officers and enlisted who supported me. I want to mention a few, since all of them couldn't attend today. Admiral Mike Mullen, 68, DGA. He was Lieutenant Mullen when I met him, very sharp company officer. He always took a keen interest in the class of 76, and he said it changed his impact his, on diversity. He changed the diversity culture of the Navy and the entire armed forces. He showed me courage. Admiral Hank Giffen, USA 71, showed absolute trust in his staff and taught me work-life balance. Admiral J. Paul Reason, DGA, 65, the Navy's first African-American four-star. I met him on Pier 22 when he commanded a nuclear cruiser. That was the first time in 06 African-American commander nuclear cruiser. I was totally impressed. He gave me a sense of pride. Admiral Don Pilling, 65, former CNO, a Trident scholar, Cambridge grad, who exhibited to me how to be an officer, a gentleman, and a professional. Admiral Harry Ulrich, USNA 72, a no-nonsense, get the job done, who taught me bigger, better, faster, because you don't have long to make a difference. Admiral Gary Ruffhead, USNA class of 73, my brigade commander, he taught me professionalism. I was on his plebe color guard and marched behind his staff during the summer. I, uh, during first class cruise, he was my running mate uh, as a missile officer. I stood watch with him and carried a destroyer station. His professionalism helped convince me to become a surface warfare officer. Years later, we ended up working together at SecNav's office when he was on Capitol Hill. At Second Fleet, he had a strike group, and when he became CNO, he chose me to lead his service forces. Yes, the people you meet here are important. They truly impact your future, and you do train your relief. You hear it all the time, but it does happen. Captain Rich Bates, 91, he was a JG on my second command tour, which went, with that more reason sent me to on short notice, but that's another story. I, when I met him, but due to a shipboard situation, I fleeted him up to operations officer and TAO. He proved to me the greatness of a young academy grad. And finally, Doug Combs, a former Marine, a political genius who was the personal advisor to the Secretary of the Navy. He taught me many political, bureaucratic, and strategic lessons that I never forgot, and he also gave back to his community. These were warriors who let their uniform remind them daily of the traditions of the service of which they were a part. I know you're getting a lot of guidance today, great guidance. Please take it away and just remember the things that will help you be a better officer, but you have to take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself physically, mentally, you can't perform and expect others to perform for you. I do believe in the saying that the difference between you and what you're gonna be in five years are the books you read and the people you meet. So make sure to surround yourself with good people and read the right books. I'm almost finished. Sometimes I hear old guys talk to midshipmen uh, and younger people and say, I would trade places with you in a heartbeat, but I won't say that. If I traded places with you, I would not have chased Soviet Union submarines in, around the Mediterranean and operated in South America with 13 other nations. I would not have sailed through the Panama Canal, the Suez Canal, the Straits of Hormuz, or the Strait of Magellan. I would not have visited the Egyptian pyramids, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the Eiffel Tower, and Buckingham Palace. I would not have visited HMS Victory Warship that we read about in a naval sea power class where Lord Nelson led his band of brothers, nor visited Churchill's war rooms or the Reichstag in Berlin. I would not have walked the streets of Jerusalem touched the Dead Sea, climbed the mountain of Masada, or gotten the Jordan River. I would not have operated out of Pearl Harbor and stood on the deck of U.S. Arizona Memorial where World War II started, then walked the deck of the USS Missouri where the war ended. I would not have been on station in Saudi Arabia, UAE, Kuwait, and the Red Sea. I would not have had the chance to serve, lead, and learn from some of America's finest sailors and Marines to make an impact on our Navy. I would not have married the love of my life, and had four of the finest kids a parent could ask for. No, I wouldn't trade places with you. My, my journey's been great, and, but now the great adventure is yours. It's just the beginning. You attend one of the nation's finest in institutions with some of the nation's best and brightest. With a great future in front of you, take advantage of it and use your seeds of greatness. I just hope my selection inspires, motivates, and gives you confidence to use your academy training the best you can 
Never count yourself out and always give back. <clears throat> In closing, my high school coach once told me, to those who have much, much is expected. Just as he expected a lot from me, the USNA alumni, over 68,000 strong, expect much from you. Midshipmen of the United States Naval Academy, I salute you. I salute the sacrifice for being here. I salute the great things you will do in the future and at the Academy. I appreciate you wearing the cloth of our nation. Please remember to let your uniform remind you daily of the traditions of the service which you are a part, and I will be cheering for you from the sidelines. And finally, keep charging. May God bless you and God bless the United States Naval Academy.